Well, I got so many nice comments about the scribble drawing of the rhino that I thought I would do another one. And I've chosen this gorgeous elephant. So I thought we'd have a green elephant. This is Windsor and Newton Brilliant Green. What I've done is just sketch out a rough pencil drawing and I'm going to get scribbling. I think on this one that I'm not going to bother um, putting in washes after we've done our scribbling. I'm going to let the scribbling do the work. So let's see how that goes. I've just started with that eye and then with my continuous line making most of the fact that the glass dip pen goes on for a lot longer than you'd think I am going to start mapping round and scribbling here just to sort of get some of the rough lines in but again I don't want to have an outline and then sort of scribble within it because I find that looks, well, just not terribly pleasant. I think this continuous line is gorgeous for the, the ears of that elephant and for the, the folds. I do need to go careful because this is quite wet and I don't want to smudge because say splots and random lines I find really attractive smudges not so much doing quite long lines here to sort of show some of that format um, and to build up the density of line I'm being careful dipping into that little bottle because it would be very easy to sort of smash the the nib and, and break it off on the bottom and that would be really upsetting because this is one of my favourite pens not because of the way it writes just because I think it's so beautiful I'm letting my eye flow over the the picture and letting my pen follow my eye and flow too and I'm trying to look at the picture an awful lot more than I'm looking at my paper because actually if one of these lines is wonky it really doesn't matter does it I'm noting that beautiful court light and so I don't want to outline there and I'll need to think of a way of capturing that light on, at the top I may end up having to put a little wash because I'm not sure how else I'll do it, but hopefully inspiration will strike. You never know, sometimes it does. And we'll see where it goes. And if I feel my hands or my shoulder getting tight and I'm not, you know, wanting to loosen up a little bit more, then I will just do a bigger random bark um, and just let those go outside the picture and you might think oh that looks a right mess but actually with time they will be fine so some of those random marks just relax you if you're starting to sort of feel your yourself sort of tightening or repeating your marks or, or whatever i have to say i'm feeling terribly relaxed it's sunday afternoon and i'm in my studio i've done most of the jobs i set myself this weekend so actually I'm feeling fairly relaxed and uh, happy this is a very green green ink um, not sure what on earth I would use it for and I have had it for ages so I obviously couldn't think of anything besides a green elephant need to go a bit darker behind here and that's just its tusks showing through there elephants have got really teeny tiny little eyes and it's quite easy to make the whole eye socket look like the eye so we need to be aware of that and make sure we don't do that 
because we don't want it to look like it's got huge cartoon eyes like Dumbo or something. I'm going to hold my pen pretty loosely as much as you can with these uh, glass dip pens. Some other pens you can sort of hold further up the, the barrel and it really helps you sort of get a loose scribbly mark. It's a little harder with these dip pens so you don't always write quite in the same way. doing this lovely sort of continuous line there are lines up and down the trunk as well as side to side if I come over here and start working over here this will have a bit of a chance to dry without me smudging it if you are concerned and need to rest your hand you could just get a clean bit of kitchen towel I know that's not clean put it there and rest on it and that will stop you smudging your work. As I say, smudges just are not attractive. Splots, scribbles, all those things, yep, attractive, perfectly happy with those, but uh, smudges, nope. I'm trying to imagine myself, oh, on safari. That's just an indication of that. Leg there. Yeah, I'm imagining myself in the middle of the bush. And it's gorgeous and warm and I can hear the cicadas and the trees and there's the sort of noise from the undergrowth. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's coming? And it's this wonderful elephant and we just have a moment where we look at each other and it's trying to work out whether I'm a threat and I'm trying to work out whether it's going to charge and we both decide we're friends uh, and safe to go on our way. So that's sort of how I'm imagining. I quite often do tell myself stories about what I'm painting because, well, because I do really. I just enjoy sort of imagining myself there if I'm painting from a reference um, you know it would be far nicer to be in Africa but I'm not so you know tough so I need next best best thing which is my imagination and I'm, I'm feeling the warmth on my back it's November in England so it is certainly not warm I'm in my shed in the garden <laughs> so the sound is of a clock not of uh, cicadas and bullfrogs and goodness knows what else uh, the rustle will be actually of our cat probably coming to demand its food but imagination is taking me to africa so this was super scribbly i'm trying to do this as fast as possible just to show what a speedy and enjoyable process it, it is because if you're sort of time limited, you could still do this and it will really give all your, your drawing muscles a wonderful workout. And you may end up with something that you really are rather fond of because it has that spontaneity in life about it that you can't get with sometimes with super precise and detailed drawing. Now you saw there I, I did you know, a splot by mistake. If you do one splot it looks like a mistake. If you do a couple it looks like you meant it. So just think about where you want to put those. And obviously I'm going to be a little more careful. Say one splot definitely a mistake, two or three just means it looks far more that you actually intended it and that you aren't just a mucking up. I'm a little concerned to say about that negative because I really want to capture the light and I wasn't going to put any wash on here but I think I'm going to have to to capture that light. I don't really see a way around it. I don't want to sort of scribble in the background because I just think that will all become too chaotic. 
got little negative shapes down here as well, which I would really like to um, sort of get. I might let some of this dry and then come in with a wash in a few places. I wondered whether this was going to be wet enough so that some of um, the ink would actually run. It's not. So let's just come round wet where I need it to go. And then I'm going to actually drop in some of the, the ink and we'll get a different mark, It'll be a lot softer. I love how ink just feathers out through wet paper. So nice. I think it would look odd if I just outlined it. So let's come inside as well. So that's wet enough. Oh, you can just use the ink that's on the paper to, to paint with. And keep that all nice and loose. Because it's quite dark over here, isn't it? Very dark behind that eye. We'll join up some of those shapes. Let's get a bit in the centre of that forehead as well. We'll join that shape. It's interesting, this ink sort of is splitting out a little bit into sort of green and more yellow coming through, which is rather fun. need for anything a bit stronger we can always go back in to the wet areas with neat ink and just strengthen that up and maybe just a little bit under the ear just to throw that ear forward so again we were just looking at direction of travel that's its leg so it would be horizontal, that's its belly, so it would be there. And we're going to just join a little shape there for a bit of fun. Just join that there. Just final bit, maybe just go a bit darker. Got sad eyes, haven't they? And I think we'll stop. I think that was about 20 minutes, might have been a little bit longer. But I hope you can see how quickly and enjoyably you could work on a doodle scribbly painting like this. And it could be either just to say really therapeutic in its own right, or you could use this as a warm up to really loosen yourself up before you go on to do a painting or something that's going to be a little bit more considered. And you could just have a whole load of fun loosening up your artistic muscles and seeing what you come up with.